Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel Gababetic and welcome to today's video. Today's video is all about the day in the life of a celiac. If you've watched my channel before you'll know that I'm celiac as well as type 1 diabetic and I was diagnosed in 2008 so I have been diagnosed a long time and I've seen the evolution of gluten free from barely anything to a lot of things and how celiac life has evolved. So I thought it would be a really fun video to show you day in life as a celiac everything I eat. We're gonna go and do a food shop in a minute and show you all of the gluten free range that's here and also talk about how daily life is with celiac disease and the cost of living with it. I thought this video would help anyone newly diagnosed or just anyone who's interested in celiac disease. Hope you liked the video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So we're gonna go and do our food shop in a minute, but first I'll give you a recap on what I had for breakfast. So it is morning time. I've just gotten up and I've brought Lana out. So now it is time to have my own breakfast. This is a more celiac video, but I will tell you about my blood sugars and insulin during it too, but I'm only gonna briefly mention it. But if you wanna see a more type one diabetes day in the life, I'll link that in the description down below. But I'm gonna have breakfast, my blood sugar is 6.9, and I always have cereal for breakfast. I don't really like to have anything else except for maybe on the weekend, might have something different, but it's a weekday, so I'm gonna go have some gluten-free cereal. So I have two here at the moment, and I'll show you them, and we will pick one and have our breakfast. And literally, Lana's favorite thing to do is play fetch, so while I'm on the way up to get the cereal, I throw this for her. Like I said, at the moment, I have two cereals. This one is basically just gluten-free corn flakes from the Go Free van, they're actually vegan as well. We'll see if the other one is vegan too. So it's actually upside down. So I'll try flip it around without spilling it. So it's basically the gluten-free version of Weetabix made with this sorghum. Carbs for having two Weetabix and that is 21. Carbs in a bowl of that is about 25. I find this spikes me more and I feel like that's more like for the weekend and this is for during the week. So I'm gonna go have some gluten-free Weetabix. So this is how they look, honestly. <laughs> They are a bit smaller than normal Weetabix. If you're from the gluten-free life, you know that gluten-free seems to be miniature everything. So I'm going to put some milk on these. So they have milk on. They do absorb the milk actually like normal non-gluten-free Weetabix. But one other thing, I have to put on this Candorel because they're very plain. They're good, but they're plain. So I just need a little bit of sweetness. And this is like the only thing I ever use artificial sweetener for. Obviously, I can't have sugar straight on them because of diabetes but i just put a little bit on like that and it just helps a lot insulin wise just to let you know this is about 21 grams of carb plus the milk is about 10 so i'm gonna take three units of insulin so that does have a taste so it does go soft it is really really like non-gluten-free weetabix and i'm gonna go and have some like it's just like weetabix so it's really hard to be excited about weetabix but definitely putting the sweetener on there helps we will talk about the price though of that particular cereal and gluten-free cereal in a while when I bring you along food shopping with me because when you see the price compared to how many Weetabixes you get in it and the taste, I think you'll agree that I'm losing out. So I'm going to go and finish that. The only reason I really do like that is because it does actually help my blood sugars. It doesn't seem to spike them too much like other cereals, but is the cost worth it? I don't know. So that's breakfast anyway, gonna go and do a little bit of work on the laptop and I will catch up with you and we will go do a celiac gluten-free food shop and show you all the choices that are here in Ireland. And also we'll talk about the cost. So I'm outside the shop, like you saw in the intro and my blood sugar, just for reference, is actually 3.9. So I always have leucoside and this is gluten-free or what I also have with me, Lyft tablets, which do say gluten-free on them. My squish mallow. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go into the shop. I have a list and it's gonna be a big shop today So I wanted to do a true representation to show you like the gluten-free range and also the cost of things So the first shop I'm gonna go into is Lidl because it is much cheaper to get the basics in Lidl Also, the thing that I feel like a lot of celiacs do say that I've heard a lot of people saying is that It's really hard to get all of the things you need in one shop Like they're getting better, but like You'll see now. This is the first stop I'm making today. I can't get everything gluten-free I need in one shop. It's just not there like the range is just not there It was definitely better in the UK when I could go to Asda. They had like everything But here little has a small gluten-free range and I can get the basics But I can't get everything. I think that's something that's really frustrating I did see some people talking about it on Instagram that if you're celiac how many shops do you have to go to to do your weekly shop and it's definitely more than one so it is very frustrating that you can't just have a one-stop shop and have everything but we'll go on so 
I got my bags in the back. Uh, let's go into Little. Right, here we go. So first stop, fruit and veg. So I want to get soup. I always get this one because it's gluten free. And what's really good is there's actually the little app. So you can see here, the soups are actually on offer two for three, which is really helpful. So that's my first stop, soup. All right, so just went to the fruit and veg. We've got potatoes, courgette, pepper, lots of fruit and veg there. Literally got the last two packets of courgette. And that's exactly what I need for my bake. So here's my list. We'll go on now to the meat. I will say I buy a lot of these. Like I've got blue meat, parmesan, and then this cheese, and also the eggs. The egg situation is so bad. So this one, I mean we have to go to another shop for eggs as well. I don't know what the cost of meat is in other countries, but it seems to be crazy over here. So three of these, 600 whatever grams, 735. Mm. In contrast, these are 365. Well, like you need protein, so I don't eat a lot of other meats, so. Okay, so here is the little gluten-free section. Now they actually have a lot. Um, this pasta is really good because it's actually a good price. Some of the breads are pretty dear, but I always get this one. This one here, which is really good. Now there's lots of things I like to buy, but they're not too bad price, but <laughs> they just seem like luxuries at the moment. So I'm trying to do a basic shop. These in fairness are really, really good. But like you can see there's staples, but there's nothing frozen or anything extra. So I'm just getting two things, the corn cakes the bread but in fairness the bread is a really good price 179 because this is the price of the bread everywhere else so very weird flavors of ice creams but kind of want them but like i won't get them because they are gluten free but they're very weird but anyway i think we're finished here okay i think i got a lot of stuff so you can see that's all vegetables bread things like soups and tins milk and frozen stuff and cheese and then the meat and then just toiletries and toilet paper. So I'll tell you the price now. Only thing about Little is it gives actual stress at the tail because they go so fast and you just can't keep up, especially when you're on your own. Now, the receipt, let's have a look. So I can tell you here, the total was 64.35, which for all of this stuff, I think is actually pretty good. Now, we did get a lot of milk and stuff and we did get some meat but what i wanted to show you is that on the receipt as well it says gluten-free and gluten-free where things are like that's the corn cakes and that's the bread i'm gonna keep this because i don't know what the setup is in other countries but in ireland if you are celiac you can claim 20 percent back on your tax for gluten-free products which it's not amazing because gluten-free is a lot more expensive but it's something so you can keep this and then you highlight what's gluten-free and you upload it onto revenue which is the tax website here and at the end of the year you can get 20 percent tax back which i think is pretty good so if you're in ireland definitely hold on to your receipts and if you want to see more about that it's on the celiac society of ireland they have a whole thing about it so but we're not done that was the first shop gonna go on to the second shop and see what gluten-free bits they have i want to get some frozen like breaded chicken and stuff they don't have that in little and i didn't really get any treats i got one bag of nachos and that's probably it for the week so Trying to be healthy, but also <laughs> the treats are expensive, but let's go to the next place. So in Little, like you saw that I had the little card and the little like vouchers. They don't have things like that for specific items in Duns. But in Duns, if you spend 25, you get a five euro voucher for your next shop off. So I don't do as big a shop in Duns where we're going to go now. So that helps a bit as well. So all of the places do have a kind of loyalty, give you a discount kind of thing. Anyway, we're going to go into Dunn's for a few bits. Don't know if I can film in here, but we'll try. And we'll check out the gluten-free. This one has a lot more branded gluten-free products, like Char. Whereas the little one was just little own brand and maybe one or two. So let's go in. All right, so this is Dunn's. First, you go into the home stuff. We're going to go to the grocery. Right, in terms of the breaded chicken, these are the ones I want. The Rosie and Jim's. They also have the blue ones, which are gluten-free too. But I want these blue ones because we have four in a pack. I don't know why, but like, they did <laughs> nothing the shops these days they're looking scarce i was gonna get waffles but there's no good offers so i'm gonna leave them the thing about duns as well is that just mixed in with the other food there's like some gluten-free things so it's not like there's just one section you have to kind of have a look around like even up here there's a gluten-free puff pastry with all of the other pastries so you just gotta keep an eye okay, they actually have eggs here so get these ones all right here's the gluten-free 
and it is very big aisle as you can see so lots of brands like i was saying lots of char let's talk about the price of the cereals here's the cereal that i had earlier that's the price you get 24 in a pack so 12 bowls everything else is like a fiver as well so this is the cheapest chocolate stars so they're not the worst but a bit sugary but like these are really good for my blood sugar but they're so expensive so i have cereal don't know if there's anything here there's no bread on this part um but there's things like rice cakes and lots of biscuits and narns these are good because they help keep your blood sugar up so i don't know i don't think there's anything i need but i just want to show you the cost of the cereal here's some bread char there it's just mental this juvella bread is like the original gluten-free bread i used to get this on prescription let me know in the comments if anyone still uses it. it just looks so old as well but <laughs> here's the memory right so i got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven things nearly 27 euro and i just don't think that's good like the, a lot of them are on offer but like i need to buy lucas aids for my blood sugar that's five euro for six that's okay but everything is just crazy prices so like did way better in little i think but just need some of the stuff like i can't get the gluten-free breaded chicken in little they don't do it that's five euro for them i can't get lucas aids there unless they have them just by chance that's five euro that's ten euro for two things so the cost of living in Ireland is very crazy and it doesn't help being celiac um, with that. So at least I can keep my receipts and claims. So I'm going to go home now and I need to have some lunch because it's like quarter to two and I still haven't had anything since breakfast. And I'm tired from the shopping so let's go home. Okay so here is the bread. And take out. <laughs> it's very weirdly sliced this one. Let me show you. One is really thick, one is really thin. So I don't know, but here's two that I've toasted already. So you could actually, in fairness, sometimes gluten-free bread, you can't even make a sandwich out of it without toasting it. But this one, pretty good. Don't know what's going on about the sizes because it doesn't normally do that. Anyway, this is my gluten-free toaster here. And yeah, holds together pretty well. So good base for the sandwich and I like to freeze it because it costs so much I don't want it to go off so I freeze it and then I toast it as I take them out and need a sandwich because sometimes I don't need it every day all right so on my sandwich I'm going to be putting some spinach and the cheese I bought earlier tomatoes and some red onion so I'm going to put it all together now <laughs> so the sandwich is looking very open-faced at the moment so maybe this thin slice on top will do mayonnaise did not go to plan but I think besides that it looks pretty good so along with my lovely sandwich as a bit of a treat by the way my blood sugar is like six at the moment and um, tell you about my insulin in a second gonna have these lovely nachos these are gluten free nacho cheese flavored nachos from little i think this bag was 70 cents which is really good you can even see how they look they are full of flavor mm. so have a salsa for them gonna be a little side nacho moment Ooh, dropped a few. Like, could have bought a bag of crisps, but I feel like this is better value. Not the healthiest meal, <laughs> but like, there's a lot of vegetables. There's spinach, red onion, and tomato. So a few nachos won't do any harm. Insulin wise, guesstimate about thirty for the sandwich, and maybe another thirty for them plus some milk. So yeah, I'm going to take about six units for this. I'm gonna eat this. Catch up with you in a bit. So I'll probably bring Lana out for a walk in a bit after lunch. My lunch was really nice, but um, I just wanted to talk first a bit about celiac disease and diagnosis. Personally, I didn't just get diagnosed celiac because I had the symptoms. I actually was diagnosed type one diabetic first, and then the hospital was running a lot of checks on me and that's what came back that I had celiac disease as well. So I didn't have like typical celiac symptoms. I guess you could say I was silent celiac, which was, I had the damage to the gut from the celiac disease, but I wasn't showing any symptoms. And in my opinion, that's just because I was so sick with type one diabetes that that's what was happening. But symptoms of celiac disease can really vary from person to person. Obviously there's the ones that I think People know that you're the vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, the bloating when you eat anything with gluten in it. 
And then there's other things like brain fog, headache, skin rashes. There's lots of different symptoms. And if you are thinking that you suffer from any of them, you should check out like the Celiac Society of Ireland or Celiac UK to see if that's kind of what's going on. And then you should definitely go to your doctor. Usually you'll probably go to your GP if you thought you might be celiac and they'll run a blood test and they'll be testing for antibodies for celiac disease there. And if they came back positive, then it will be confirmed with a biopsy. A biopsy is where they look at the intestine. And when they looked at it for me and took a sample, you could see that the villi, which are like little kind of finger like projections of the intestine that absorb nutrients into the body were completely flat. So that meant nothing was being absorbed and I was celiac. So as we know, celiac is an autoimmune disease. So it's your body autoimmune reaction in response to having gluten. That's why the antibodies are there. And then the villi get flattened and your body just can't absorb anything and you might lose a lot of weight and be very sick and that kind of thing. So if you are thinking you're celiac, definitely get yourself checked out. An important thing to note is if you are thinking you're celiac and maybe the blood test confirmed that you might be, you have to stay on a full gluten diet until you get your biopsy because if you go gluten-free before your biopsy, your body might start to heal and recover and it might look like you're not celiac, but you actually are. So that's a very important thing. And then if you are confirmed celiac, you will have to go on the lifelong gluten-free diet. That's just how it is. Like it's not fun at the start. It's a very hard adjustment. I think people don't see how hard it is both physically and mentally and socially. So physically you're changing your whole diet to gluten-free. You may feel better because you've been celiac and you've been eating gluten and feeling sick. So you probably will feel better physically. But mentally, it's very different. You know, you have to be very aware of what you're eating. You have to check the labels of things. It might be very daunting at first trying to go around the supermarket and see what's gluten-free. The societies can help that. They have apps and books that tell you what's gluten-free. And eventually, you'll just come to learn what's gluten-free. And then I found the biggest thing is socially. Now things are better. There's a lot of options in restaurants and stuff. But at the start, there really wasn't. And a lot of places just didn't do gluten-free. So if you wanted to go out, you know, I was 13 when I was diagnosed. If I wanted to go out with my friends when I was a little bit older, maybe 16, 17 for food, like oftentimes I couldn't find anything and I just couldn't. And I didn't want to be awkward either. I didn't want to be the difficult one. So I just avoided the situation. I think it's very hard socially. Definitely research if a place has gluten-free options. A lot of them do now, but you really have to be wary of cross-contamination and always, always ask if something is gluten-free and it's cooked in a gluten-free manner that's safe for celiacs because you don't want to be having gluten-free, you know, chicken wings that are cooked in oil that's made with all bread from everything else. So yeah, that's just a little bit of chat about celiac disease. Like I've been so many years now, 14, nearly 15 years. It's been a long time, so used to it. And then with the type 1 diabetes, not a great combo, but a lot of people that are celiac or diabetic have the other. They're kind of like sister autoimmune illnesses, which is not fun. So I am looking at my jigsaw here. Lana is outside, so I'm gonna go and get her and we're gonna go for a walk. So I forgot my phone, but we just did a walk in the woods. All really nice, really nice weather. Don't know if you can even see, Lana's in there. <laughs> and we're just going home now. And I actually forgot my phone, so I have no idea what my blood sugar is. But once it's back up on my phone, I will show you. And I'm gonna get some dinner, but the walk was really nice. And where are you? Can I see you? Time to go home. Okay, Lana is going over to see the cows for the first time. If anyone didn't know, I live in the countryside. <laughs> and this is beside my house. She's just seeing who's around. Okay, so I'm just back from the walk. Blood sugar is going a bit high, 13, and that is because I had the nachos, which are full of fat, so the fat is breaking down later on. But they were worth it. Anna's just here with me, we're playing with her toy. I'm gonna feed her, give her dinner. And then I'm actually gonna go out for dinner because I think it would be really good to show that you can eat out with celiac disease. So I'm gonna go somewhere which has a really good reputation for being allergy friendly and that's Nando's. If you don't have Nando's where you're from, it's basically a Portuguese chicken restaurant, but they are really, really good in terms of the allergies. And if you request it, I'll show you that when I'm there at the till, they'll put a note on it to say gluten allergy or whatever allergy you have. Sometimes they even put a little allergy flag in the meal as well. And then that way they cook the food, they prepare everything separately, they clean it down to prevent cross contamination. So yeah, it's a really good place. I'm gonna show you it now. I'm just gonna feed. Do you want your dinner? Do you want your dinner? Yeah, just gonna feed her and then we will go to Nando's for dinner. Okay, so this is Nando's and this is the menu. So I'm probably gonna go 
with I have a reward. You actually get loyalty stuff here too. So probably gonna get the whole chicken to share because that's free in the reward and then the sides. So I think the only sides that aren't gluten free are like the garlic bread and one yeah the grains but the mash is i'm gonna get that and chips are as well even the salted chips and the rice but we'll let them know that we're celiac as well when we get there good um i have an allergy so that's okay um, yeah that's grand yeah okay so i've just told them that i have an allergy so they're going to get the manager because that's how they do it here so we'll keep an eye on this and i have a gluten allergy okay creamy mash and the spicy rice and then that's all for the gluten free so this is the halloumis which are like my favorite thing and a chili jam and blood sugar is 4.8 but these are so good so this is the whole chicken and this is what I mean it's hot that's the spice then they put allergy on it so it does reassure you that the food is gluten free so here's spicy rice mash the chicken the halloumis obviously sharing the chicken because it's massive but it's just really good that they have the allergy on there so I can enjoy it and not be worried. And for anyone wondering the carb count, you can look these up online and I'm going to take about 7 units because I'm actually going low. But you can look up the carbs online. Obviously nothing in the chicken, nothing in the halloumi but some in the jam. So you can work out depending on what side you get. But I'm going to take this now and enjoy my dinner. So that Nando's was super hot. Like, oh my god, I never usually get the hot. So I'm literally dying, so I need something for dessert to cool me off. And also my blood sugar's gone low. So I'm gonna go back into little, as you can see, and get some gluten-free ice cream. So, got the pistachio ice creams, but also this is gluten-free. So it's basically like Ben & Jerry's fish food, but actually gluten-free. So we'll try that tonight too. But definitely gonna try a pistachio ice cream. I don't really know what pistachio is gonna be like, because I haven't had it in a very long time, or in an ice cream, but... Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's very um French pan. Not good. I don't, don't think I like it. So I will try the other ice cream at home. <laughs> so we got fantastic fish. <laughs> and I'm gonna go Lana, no. Gonna go open it up, see how close it resembles fish food and have a taste. So first glance, it looks very chocolatey. There's definitely some caramel and pieces of fish food in there. So here we go. Let's see if this is as good as fish food. Mm. Oh, it's really good. <laughs> so much better than those horrible uh, pistachio ice creams that taste like French pan. That's really good. I will be going back for more. So that is the end of my celiac day in the life video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it informative. I have Lana here with me. So if you did, please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions about celiac disease or gluten free or if you like this style video too, I could always do more. And if you want to see a type 1 diabetes day in the life, I did film one maybe two years ago now. I'll link that in the description down below. But let me know if you want to see a more up to date one because I filmed that in the UK. I could do one in Ireland. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.